Hey, welcome to Westbrook Online. I'm so thrilled to be able to share uh, this day with you and this entire month as we are right in the middle of a brand new series called All In. And we're so thrilled that you are with us. And we want to challenge you, our online uh, congregation, to continue to be all in with us as well. One of the things that we want to challenge you to do as you are watching online is that we want to encourage you to connect with us. Let us know that you're watching our online service. And you can email us at info at westbrook.church. Info at westbrook.church. And we'll want to try our very best to stay connected to you no matter where you're watching this from across the globe. With that, we also want to encourage you and let you know that we are really putting all of our efforts, we're going all in around here as it pertains to evangelism and discipleship in 2023. Maybe you have some questions about how you can, even though you're out there on the online congregation, how you can grow in your walk with Christ as well. You email us, you connect with us, and let us know that you're, that you're with us, and we'll do our best to try to figure out how to share in that way. So that's the number one thing we want to encourage you to do, is go all in with us in 2023, and we certainly hope that you're kind of catching that vibe as you're watching these sermons this month long. One of the other things that we want to encourage you to do is we want you to take a moment in this service to encounter God. One way that you can do that is that you can find some elements and remember Christ's broken body and his shed blood. We take some time in our in-person services every week to celebrate and share in that way. Maybe you can be a part of that as well. And then another thing that we always do as part of encountering God is we give faithfully of our stewardship, give faithfully of our blessings. And we want to encourage you to go online and also share in that way. It's a wonderful way to prove your trust in God and to be a part of what God is doing this in this incredible congregation. So thank you so much for being with us today. I want to pray. We're going to worship and sing. And then I want you to hear the word of God today. Would you bow your heads wherever you are? Lord, thank you for this moment that we have uh, to be together in this, this medium. God, of an online service. And I pray that all, all month long, as we talk about being all in, that God, you will work in all of us to figure out what that means for us. Now, God, may you be blessed and may you be honored as we give ourselves to you. In Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Enjoy the service today.
Well, good morning. It's great to be with you this morning here at Westbrook. My name is Seth Rempel. I am the Central Connections pastor here at Westbrook and at Crossroads in Joliet. And I've had the privilege of being on staff at Crossroads for over 13 years. Actually, it'll be 14 years in July. And, and you know, I made this transition just about a month ago. And uh, it's great to be here. And Pastor Mont a couple of weeks ago said, hey, I want you to preach at Westbrook on the 22nd. So I said, of course, I'd love to do that. And so I'm excited to be here sharing with you this morning. And, and hopefully throughout today and over the, the coming weeks and months and years, you'll get to know a little bit more about me. But most importantly, I hope that today that uh, you will be challenged and encouraged by the Word of God and what He is calling each of us to do. And right now we're in the midst of a sermon series here at Westbrook called All In. Uh, you know, we're committed to being all in. All in on what? All in on discipleship. All in on following God. All in on being a disciple of God. All in on following Him and, and helping others follow Him. And so in recent weeks, you've heard messages about going all in on your commitment to following God. You've been encouraged and, and challenged to grow in your faith. You've been challenged and encouraged to share your faith with others. And, and today I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you with the impact of what going all in can look like. Now, when you think of the word impact, do you have a picture that comes to your mind? Maybe for you, when you think of impact, you think of a crash like this. A little violent impact, right? Or, or maybe you think of something like this. A little Gallagher smashing a watermelon. Or maybe you think of impact like this. Nothing like a friendly rivalry, right? <laughs> Cubs and Sox, they've had quite an interesting rivalry over the years. And, and I'm not sure what side of the rivalry you fall on, uh, if you fall on any. But uh, my wife and her family, they're Cubs fans I've been privileged in my almost 20 years of living in Joliet to have been able to see both the White Sox and the Cubs win the World Series, and it's been a lot of fun to watch and, and be a part of. But in fact, I just want to share with you what was more exciting for me than those moments was when the Kansas City Royals won the World Series in 2015. Yes, I am a Royals fan, so this whole Cubs-Sox rivalry thing, I do tend to lean a little more towards the Cubs side. Um, but we won't talk about... Pastor Mont's love for the Cardinals, because in 1985, my beloved Royals, the first team I ever loved, won against Pastor Mont's Cardinals. So let's not get into the number of championships Cardinals have. We don't, we don't talk about those kinds of things. But going back to impact, when you think of impact, maybe you picture something like this. Jordan with his last game-winning shot, right? I'll never forget the Gatorade slogan, the commercials, the slogan, want to be like Mike. How many of you remember those moments? Yeah. You're starting to sing it already. I can hear it. Or maybe you think of the impact. You think of somebody who made an impact. You think of somebody like this, the great evangelist Billy Graham. What about this couple? Some of you are like, I don't, I don't know who that is. Or, or this guy. What about the next guy? Or this guy? See, those last four people, some of you are like, I, I don't even know who those people are. Well, the first couple, that was my mom and my dad. They've had quite an impact on my life. And then there was my, my, my Jeff. <laughs> There's Jeff. He's my small group leader when I was in youth group. And Steve and Randy, the other two guys who were youth group leaders when I was growing up in youth group. And all these guys at different points in time had an impact on my life. Not just by telling me about Jesus' love, but by showing me through their actions. Each of these people have been following God, been following Jesus almost their whole lives. And they faithfully served him by serving others. And they set quite an example for me and for many others. It had quite an impact on me. Taught me the importance of growing in my relationship with God by reading his word, by, by praying, by giving of my time, my talents, and my treasures, and by sharing God's love and truth with me and with others around me. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I think about making an impact on this world, it's a very overwhelming thought and feeling. You know, when we look at athletes like Michael Jordan, we can see how many people have wanted to be like Mike and yet have fallen short. 
When we look at people like Billy Graham, we think there's no way I could ever speak like him and share Christ like he ever did. And so we feel defeated. We give up before we even try. I mean, it's like Billy Graham, he could get up on the stage and he could talk and he'd be like, Mary had a little lamb and that lamb was the savior of the world known as Jesus. And won't you accept Jesus as your Lord and savior and thousands of people would come to Christ, right? And it's like, I could never do that. When I look at Jesus and his disciples and the impact that they had on this world, those are some pretty big shoes to fill. I mean, Jesus, he spoke to so many people. And in fact, there were times where he spoke to thousands of people, feeding thousands of people with what just started as five loaves and two fish. And we start looking at the, the church as it got started in the New Testament, and we see that the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And we see numbers in the thousands of people being saved. And, and that can all feel very overwhelming to us. But see, that's the impact that can happen when followers of Jesus go all in. And that leads me to our big idea for today, which is this. We can make our greatest impact when we go all in with whatever role God gives us. We can make our greatest impact when we go all in with whatever role God gives us. So the question for you is, what role has God given you? You know, I get it. We're not all called to be great athletes. We're not all going to be famous YouTube or TikTok stars or, or famous whatever it is, fill in the blank, Right? We're not all called to be the best preachers or evangelists or pastors, but we are all called to be disciples who make disciples. See, after Jesus died and, and rose again, he spent time with his disciples. And, and before he went back to heaven, he told them this in Matthew chapter 28. He said that Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus has empowered each of us to not only be his disciples, but to go and make disciples. Can you imagine the impact if we were all to go all in as disciples. So how do we begin to make the greatest impact we could possibly make? Well, it starts with this. The first thing for today is this, to go all in as a disciple. If we're going to make the greatest impact we can make, we have to go all in as a disciple of Jesus. You know, I'm not going to go too far into discipleship today. You know, Pastor Jake talked about discipleship uh, on January 8th, so if you haven't watched that, I want to encourage you to go back and check that out. But disciple, what is a disciple? Well, a disciple is someone who loves Jesus, who follows Jesus' teachings and, and lives their life following after his teachings and the ways that Jesus lived. In, in Pastor Jake's message, he did a deep dive on the four markers of a healthy disciple. And these are the four markers that, that are ways that we believe every follower of Christ should express and exercise their faith. He talked about worship, putting God first in your life. Talked about the practices, putting the rhythmic spiritual discipline. Talked about connection, being in relationship with others. And he talked about action, living the gospel by adopting the habits of Jesus. And there's a flyer that we've been putting in the brochures, uh, the programs each week that show different ways that we as a church are providing opportunities and ways for you to dive deeper into discipleship. That is also online uh, at westbrook.church slash discipleship. But you want to make an impact on this world? You want to make an impact on somebody else? Begin with yourself. Dive deep into being a disciple of Jesus. So you can't just depend on coming to church to make you a disciple. You can't just depend on listening to a pastor speak to help you become a better disciple. No, you have to build into that. You want to make an impact on this world? Dive deep into discipleship. Draw closer to Jesus. The question I have for you is, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior through baptism? If not, start there. Mark your in-touch card. Let's talk about baptism. We'd love to help you take that next step. Maybe you've already been baptized. 
then dive deeper into discipleship. Dive deep into the four markers of discipleship. Take a look at what your next step is in your walk with Christ. In his letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul said this. He said, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to do what? To equip his people for works of service. So that who? So that the body of Christ may be built up. See, it's not my job as a a pastor to do the work for you. It's my job to help equip you, to help enable you to grow in your discipleship. And see, as the Connections pastor, I'm going to do my best to provide you with a variety of tools and resources and opportunities to help you grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ, who makes disciples. And that leads me to the second way we can make our greatest impact, and that's to go all in as a disciple maker. Go all in as a disciple maker. Again, I'm not going to get too much into what it means to make disciples. As, as Pastor Mont last week preached on evangelism, he shared ways that we can share the good news of Jesus with those around us. But see, discipleship and evangelism, they go hand in hand. As we grow closer to Jesus, we can't help but want to share the good news of Jesus with those around us. But Seth, didn't you just say that Christ gave some to be evangelists and pastors and teachers? Yeah, I did say that. But also, though some people may have that special gifting to uh, be an evangelist, to be a pastor, we've all been given the gift to evangelize, to share with others, to make disciples. When Jesus was going back to heaven, He wasn't just speaking to one or two of his disciples. No, he was speaking to a crowd, a whole host of people who followed him. And he said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. How do we make disciples? We baptize them. We teach them. We help them draw closer to Christ. We share the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We don't just do that from a street corner. No, we walk with people. We talk with people. We get to know people. I know there are people who have come to Christ because of an evangelist sharing like Billy Graham. Maybe we're not going to be like Billy Graham, but we can all be evangelists. We can all share the gospel message like Paul did In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want to encourage you, write that passage down, take a look, read that this week. That's a freebie. That's not in your handout. That's a freebie. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, highlight it in your Bibles. That's the gospel message. Paul shared his story, and we all have a story that we can share with those around us about the amazing love of God who sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life, to die on a cross, to come back to life, who gave us hope not only for a new life and eternity in heaven with him, but a new life here on this earth. You want to make an impact on this world? Dive deep into discipleship. Dive deep into making disciples. Invite others onto this journey with you. We make disciples by walking with people through this thing called life. All right, we share what God has done in our lives and we help people see why we live the way we live. We help them draw closer to Jesus. Last week, Pastor Mont challenged us to write down one name. One name of someone that we are praying for to come to know Jesus Christ. If you didn't get a chance to do that last week, I want to encourage you to stop by one of the tables and write down a name on a post-it note of a friend that we can be praying with you for. We're praying over each of those people that have been listed. And in our 21 days of prayer and fasting that we're doing as a church, we're praying for God to prepare people to be open to hearing about Christ. We're praying for the laborers to go and share Christ. So that means as a church, we are praying for you, we're praying for your friends, your neighbors, the people you come in contact with. We're praying for you to grow in your discipleship. We're praying for you to be bold in making disciples. You want to have an impact on those around you? Go all in as a disciple. Go all in as a disciple maker. Shine the light of Jesus. And that leads me to the third way that we can make our greatest impact, and that's to go all in as a servant. Jesus himself came not to be served, but to serve others. 
Jesus showed his disciples what it's like to serve others. He washed their feet during their last supper together. Not only did he serve them, but he commanded them to go and do likewise, to go and serve others. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 11, verse 1, he said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Does that mean that Paul was a perfect example? No, he was simply someone who was all in as a disciple. He was someone who was all in trying to make disciples, who would be all in in following the example of Christ. Maybe you've heard the quote before. It says, you may be the only Bible some people read. You may be the only Jesus some people see. And I I was trying to find out who said that exact quote, but uh, I couldn't find who said that, but... I think it comes from this St. Francis of Assisi quote, which says this, says, the deeds you do may be the only sermon some people will hear today. What you do to or what you do for people often speaks louder than your words. Does that mean you don't use your words? (laughs) No, quite the opposite, right? We're called to share the love of Christ in word and in deed. And when I think about serving others, I'm I'm taken back to a time when my daughters, who are about to be 16 and 14, when they were just a few years old, we were making a trip to New Jersey to go see my family uh, for Christmas. And on this nice, short, 13-plus-hour drive, one way, we had the DVD players hooked up in the car for them to watch movies. And, And while there was one movie that played on repeat pretty much the entire trip there and back, it was the movie Robots. Anybody ever seen that movie before? Great movie, came out in 2005. If you haven't seen it, it's been out for a while. Uh, But it was a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I got a little tired of hearing it after like four, five, six, 20 times. But there's one line in this movie that always stood out to me. And it's this line that says, see a need, fill a need. What a great reminder to Christ followers, right? When we see a need, we're called to fill a need. Part of following Christ is, is serving others. So what does it look like for you to go all in as a servant? Some of you are, are currently serving here at the church or in the community, and we love that, and it's so great. And you grow in your discipleship when you're serving. And some of you like coming to church, but you haven't taken that next step to, to get involved, to, to be back in serving. And, and since COVID, I know it kind of messed things up, but now's a great time to get back in to serving. We can't do all the things we do as a church without faithful volunteers making all of this happen. As a church, we have different needs in our kids' ministry, on our production team, on our worship team, on our welcome team. And you may think, I don't, I don't know where the best place for me to get plugged in is, but, or I don't have the skills to play an instrument, or, or regardless of what your skill level is, we have a place for you to help you serve, to find that place to serve. Step into service and see what God can do with you. We're gonna help equip you to do this work. Fill out the Connect card. Let us know how you can get plugged in to serving. And see, as a church, we have different ways you can serve on the weekend, but we also try to provide different opportunities throughout the year to get connected to service in our community. In fact, as you leave today, you're gonna walk out the doors, and we wanna encourage you to stop by the tables to sign up to receive more information so that you can serve at our great day of service on Saturday, May 20th. Go ahead, put that in your calendar, Saturday, May 20th, a great day of service. It's exactly what the name says. It's a great day where as a church body, we go out into our community to serve people in our community, help families in need. Maybe you know a family in need. Let us know. We want to help serve all right, there's also sign-ups out there where you can sign up to receive more information about the missions trips that we have coming up this summer. We have a trip to Mexico planned for June 19th through 23rd. Put that on your calendar. We're going to serve in La Paz, Mexico, serving with our new church plant down there. The second trip is to Appalachia with Cumberland Mountain Outreach, July 22nd to 28th. There's a lot of different ways that we're going to provide for you, different opportunities that we provide to serve in the community, serving the church, serving the community, not just when we say there are opportunities, but be a servant, like Christ was a servant to us. There's a lot of ways to serve others, see a need, fill a need, be the hands and feet of Jesus. 
In Matthew chapter five, Jesus said this, he said, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do you understand the impact that a simple light can make? What happens when the lights go out and it's dark? Right? It's hard to see. When it's dark, it's, it's hard to see. When you're in the dark, even just a, a little bit of light draws your eye. Even in a dark room, a little bit of light shines and illuminates what's around it. And I don't know if you were here on Christmas Eve for our candlelight service. It's a great service, great time being together. But what an experience to see one candle being lit and then lighting another candle and then another and then another. Seeing the light of Jesus illuminate in the darkness. As you do good deeds for others, your light shines for Jesus Christ. Your light attracts others and it helps them to see Jesus. As a disciple, as someone who follows Jesus, who follows his teachings, who follows his ways, it's amazing to see the impact that can happen when you go all in as a disciple. And when you go all in as a disciple who makes disciples, as a disciple who serves others. When you're at work, remember, you're working for your boss, but more importantly, you're working for God. Your light shines when you don't snap at your coworker. Your light shines in the way that you treat and serve others. When you're at church serving kids, your light shines for parents to see their kids receive the love of Jesus and for the parents to be able to come in and, and freely worship God. When you're serving in the community, you're helping a family in need, your light shines for Jesus and people are drawn towards him. Don't hide your light. Go all in as a disciple. Go all in as a disciple maker. Go all in as a servant and watch God do his work through you. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. See, we serve a, a mighty God who will supply you with everything you need to do what he is calling you to do. And that leads me to the fourth way that we can make our greatest impact, and that's to go all in as a steward. Go all in as a steward. See, everything we have is a gift from God. We serve an awesome God. Psalm 50 tells us that everything in the world is his. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. God doesn't need anything for, from us. See, what God does, he gives to us, and he asks us to be good and faithful stewards. So I mean, what's a steward? A steward is, is someone who looks after, who cares for, or manages someone else's property or possessions. What would happen if you were to go all in as a steward of the resources that God has given to you? You see, time and time again, we see in the Bible where God calls his people to be generous, to, to give. See, God is more concerned about the heart behind our giving. He's more concerned about our heart behind the service. He's more concerned about our heart behind following him. When we give, is it just about a certain amount? I mean, there are several teachings about tithing and, and the importance of tithing, tithing and I believe it's, it's good to tithe and we should tithe and we need to tithe, but God is more concerned about your heart and being willing to sacrifice and being a good steward of what he has given to you. So trust him. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with your possessions. Obey him. Trust him. Trust his word. Obey him and see what he can do with your faithfulness. You want to grow as a disciple who makes disciples and serves others and, and is a faithful steward? I want to encourage you, read First and Second Timothy. That's the second freebie I'm giving you today. Go home, read First and Second Timothy. Write it down. Read it. Check out what Paul is saying to Timothy. Let me give you a quick glimpse of First Timothy chapter 6, where Paul says this to Timothy. He says, but, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. Maybe you've heard that saying before, right? But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, 
eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. See, what do we have to offer? As people, we have brought nothing into this world and we won't take anything with us. It's our job to learn to be content with what God has given to us. We must pursue Christ and and his call in our lives. We must be faithful with what he has blessed us with. And Paul finishes up his first letter to Timothy saying this, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Real life, true life, eternal life so much greater than anything of this world. There's so much uncertainty in this world, but you know what we can be certain of? It's God. We can be certain that God will provide everything we need. He'll provide everything we need to go all in as his disciples, as his disciples who make disciples, who make disciples, who make disciples. Dig into his word. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in drawing close to him and helping others draw close to him. See, because God provides everything we need to share Christ with those around us. You don't know what to say? Pray that God will give you the words. Feel like you can't speak well? Me too. I stumble over my words all the time. That's why I have to write things down and say what I want to say, how I feel like God is leading me to say. Moses, he felt that pressure. He felt the same way. You're not alone. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to be the most eloquent speaker You don't have to have the whole Bible memorized. Simply shine the light of Jesus. Sometimes the best way we can share Christ is to simply spend time with people, listen to people, share what Christ has done in your life. You're still not sure? Well, we have an opportunity for you to invite friends to join you at Alpha. And I say invite them to join you. Don't just say, hey, go go to Alpha. Alpha is a great place for discussions about faith and topics of faith that people have a lot of questions about. See, God provides everything we need to do good deeds. And sometimes the needs around us, they're they're obvious and they're easy for us to take care of. Sometimes the needs around us are obvious and require more than we can do ourselves. But see, the good thing is we're not alone in this world. The mark of a follower of Christ is someone who knows what to do and and does it. They see a need, they feel a need. They, They become a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word. God provides everything we need to be a good steward of what he has blessed us with. And sometimes we think we gotta, we gotta wait until we get to a certain level, to a certain amount of income or, or possessions before giving, before being generous. But remember the command from Paul. He said, be rich in good deeds. Be generous and willing to share. Start somewhere. Start faithfully and consistently giving. Increase your generosity to see God continue to bless you and trust you. Go all in and watch God do his thing. So my challenge for you as we wrap up today is this question. What is your next step to go all in? You've heard the call. You've been hearing the call to go all in. What is your next step to go all in as a disciple of Jesus? What is your next step to go all in as a disciple maker, as someone who makes disciples? What's your next step? What's your next step to go all in as a servant? What's your next step to go all in as a steward? You're not alone. God is with you. And we are all in this together. So let's all go all in. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the hope we have in him, the new life we have in him. And thank you for your Holy Spirit who equips us and comforts us and provides for us. We thank you for the ways that you provide. 
And God, we pray that as we go all in, that your name would be lifted high and people would draw close to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, sir. Jesus, you change everything.